Hi everybody, this is Becca from Stiletto's Fine Art Studio coming to you today. I filmed a video during class about a week ago of a watercolor class we were painting Gerber Daisy. This is a great class for adults. This is a great class for kids. Kids could do this. I'm going to post it in the free kids one because it is a very basic watercolor. And boy, would they feel like they were doing something special if they did this class. So don't feel that uh, just because I'm posting it for adults, it is great for children. It is great, okay? So I'm going to show you what I use though. So I have. And when I did the lesson, I used watercolor paper. Now this is Canson. I prefer Canson. I like Canson. But that doesn't mean you have to use it. Use what you have. You, I do recommend watercolor paper for these lessons or multimedia paper. Regular paper won't work, okay? But kids, if you were doing this lesson and you didn't want to do watercolors, you can draw the design out and then you can color them in with pens and crayons and markers and Sharpies and whatever you want. You can do that too. Okay, so if you don't have watercolor paper, Divert. Use colored pencils in color. The shading techniques are very similar. You know, you go light to darks and stuff and you can, and everything. But we're going to do the lesson with watercolor paper. All right. And then I have, you can, there's two different types of watercolors. So these are, this is actually, this is a very inexpensive set. I think it's $5.99. You can go right online to michaels.com and order these. And I'm sure every other art place in the world has them so um go online and look there's blick art supplies and there's some different ones just go online and look okay if you don't have them so these are tubes this is what i use during the session and it requires you to have a tray uh to put the inks in the you know the little paint trays with the holes in them you need those and you have to dilute these so you don't have to use watercolors like this this is what i taught the class with but i had students who used this Okay, I think these are $5.99 also at, from the Michaels site. I believe this one is from Michaels. This is a cheap one. This is like, you can go up. I have um, a gum, uh, I can't remember the name of it. I have a really nice brand of them at home that was $40 for, and it's a little more opaque. So it doesn't matter what you spend though. You know, if you love watercolors and you absolutely love it, buy the higher quality stuff. But until you learn, don't. These work great. Not all supplies can I say that, but these work great. All right, and you can use them the same. So when you use the tubes, I wanted to explain this to you because I talk about it during the video, but I don't, um, I don't show it. So if you're using the tubes, you squeeze the, you squeeze the paint into the little tiny holes on the side. All right, and then in the bigger holes in the tray, you add water to the hole. All right. And then you pull some of the paint over and you mix it. You have to do that to at least start. And then you can test it on your test paper to see how dark it is. That's how you use those. You can go in with full on straight on color. You'll see me do it in the video. Like I like to use white for highlights that I didn't dilute. But I do that at the very end and that is for details and details only. These aren't acrylic paints. It's not that you can't use them. I push the limits of paint all the time. But I'm trying to teach you the basics and how to do things. And you always want to use water with them. So you add a little bit of water to it. These, when you when you use these, what I like to do, and you can have one of those trays too, or you can flip it over. You can. This is really kind of neat. So these open up. I just like to show this. If you need to, you'll notice that all of these little holes over here are indented. They, they, they're caved in. So you can use these. You can add some water and pull some color in. You just need to take this into the sink when you're done and rinse that out when you're all done so you can create mixed palettes over here you can even create the colors that you like over here leave them here if you're going to come back and paint tomorrow they'll dry you know obviously wait for it to dry your paint will dry all up all the water will evaporate out and your paint color that you mix will be in there so if you want to mix colors and use this section over here to mix do that and then come back to it you can have or you can have two palettes you can have your main colors and you can have your mixed palettes and you can just use this you can mix smaller amounts in there with water, okay? And you can check them the same way. So that's how you do it. I do activate these paints. So when I'm working in here, I have to bring water on my brush in here and I swirl it around until the paint stops being hard. Because you can see right now it's hard. These are like, these are called pans. They're hard. Okay? Look, I rub it and I finger don't even get it on my finger. But if I bring water in there, I do. And these will last for quite a while. And I'll mix right on here because you can always rinse them. So if I'm doing a brown, 
I might come into the brown and then I might bring a little bit of it into the green or bring, I may bring to bring green into brown and I'm getting a different colored green. You can rinse it off when you're done or you use it up, but you can also bring that over here and do that. So there's many ways to use these, but I wanted to show that quickly. Okay. Now I gave a demonstration, I'll give a demonstration on how to use the watercolor papers. We suggest adhering them to a board. Foam core is great. You can get it at the dollar store. Walmart has it. Um, you can probably order a piece in, but if you don't have that, use something at home. You can literally do this on your table at home. Just um, make sure it's a table that's not going to get stained. Watercolors will wash up. Excuse me. Watercolors will wash up, but you just tape it down and, and, and whatnot so that the paper stays in place. Or you can do any surface. You can have a piece of wood. I'm sure you can find something floating around your house that you can tape this down to. And I like to use masking tape or painter's tape. Something that I mentioned briefly during the class is when you go to take the tape off, this is something I like to say, and I'll put it in the lesson. When you take the tape off of the board, you want to you run the blow dryer over top of it and you slowly peel it away because the paper could rip. If you don't blow dry it, especially if it sits more than 24 hours, the, the, the glue really adheres. So when you run the blow dryer over the tape, what it does is it releases the glue, it warms the glue up, it kind of turns the glue back into liquid a little bit and it allows you to slowly peel the tape away. And I always peel away from the project because I've had them rip before, but I'd certainly rather rip off to the side than rip into my painting because you can always disguise that and hide that. So those are the few things that I wanted to say about this lesson because it is a little less formal. Like I said, it's during the class, you're gonna hear me talking to other people, but I've videotaped it for them, but I figured I might as well share this one. Okay, so step one, um, doing watercolors is you have to prep your paper. So I got watercolor paper. I trimmed an inch off the edge of my paper trimmer to make it appear 11 by 14 because this is 11 by 15. I'm going to use this. It's going to be my bookmark, I call them, and we're going to use that to sample the colors as we go. That way you can see what color you have so we don't waste it, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is, hey, Fran, can you get me paper towels? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my paper with my flat brush. I have to wet both sides, okay? Okay. All right, so I'm going to wet both sides. And I'm going to wipe the excess water off, but I have quite a bit on here. My One of my students is grabbing me a, we have people coming in the door, but she's grabbing me a paper towel. So I like paper towels. You can throw them away when you're done. So we wet both sides. We get them quite wet. When you wet the paper, what it does is it saturates the paper and it makes the paper expand. So you gotta wipe the extra off. You can't leave it on there. So you just wipe it off. Okay. I'm gonna lay it down on my foam core. And I'm gonna wipe the other side off. I use foam core because it's easy, it's clean. You can get a peach real cheap at the dollar store, okay? And I get it on here. It doesn't have to be sad. You want it pretty dry. You just want it wet enough so it expands the paper. And then I'm actually working on a piece. I had another piece taped on here for another painting. Then I take my tape, and I'm going to tape it down in an even pattern. Now, this is an 11 by 14 paper now. So I put an even border around the outside, and I just kind of judge the edge of my border. I don't go nuts on this. The paper has to be dry. You know, you have to you have to dry off a lot of the water or it won't stick. Okay, I'm gonna stick it here. Okay. And then we're gonna blow dry this. I get, I'm going to put it all the way around now. If you want, you can put another layer on if you don't think it's sticking good. So I just like an even border so that when I take the table off, it has a real pretty little white border around it. It looks nice when you're going to frame it. Okay, there's lots of ways to do this. This is the easiest for teaching in a classroom. This helps keep your paper flat. You won't get as many bows and wrinkles. You don't have to do it. You can staple it down if you have a staple gun. I just don't happen to have one here, so I'm going to use the tape. Now, if I needed to do another layer, I could. It's not sticking good, by all means. Bring another layer if you want an even layer. Like this will put an even one inch all the way around it like this, if I did it like this. Okay. And come back in and around it. So if you're afraid of it bubbling up, 
Nothing wrong with coming in and adding another layer of tape in. The key to getting the tape off is you need to use a blow dryer. And we blow dry in between steps. So every time we blow dry the paper, we re adhere the tape back down. We push it down. We rub our hands over it. That way, it always stays stuck down good. The only issue you run into this is if your paper is too wet, the tape's not going to stick. That's why I'm putting another layer. I put a layer out further. And I did one that's exactly butted up against the edge of the paper so I know that it's an exact perfect border. And voila, I can blow dry that. But I'm ready and prepped to go, and the paper is going to be nice and taut, and I'm not going to get tons of bubbles in it. All right, we do that every time we start one. Give myself an idea of a stem. I'm going to curve my stem like this. Now, I don't push real hard. Okay, you don't want to push too hard. I'm going to push a little harder so they can see on the camera. And I'm going to paint over it. So I'm going to put a little stem line here. Okay, don't push that hard on yours. I might see mine through my watercolor. And that's okay. Just, you know. And then we're going to come and put... I'm just going to get the first line. I'll do the rest of the stem later. And I'm going to come above it a little bit. And I'm going to put my center. We're going to draw out a Gerber daisy. There's the one oh, thing you want to know is if your old tape old. starts coming up, you always want to just before you start make sure your tape's down because we blow dry in between sessions sometimes and the heat will reactivate your glue so sometimes it'll make it come back off but it, it has reactivated so push it back down and you get a great seal. That's tip number one, okay? Now we're going to do our petals. So watch. Petals, they're more like big loops, okay? Can you see that? You see how they taper in a little bit? Can you guys see that? Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna do a petal. So the next petal is it's not gonna start out here. It's gonna kind of come up along the side edge here a little bit. And I'm gonna create another one. Now you want to try to get consistent height and width. It doesn't have to be spot on perfect, but be consistent. You can kind of see if you need to put a little marker here so that you're you know, okay, I need to come out to there. I'd rather have you do that than just freehand it and have one that's an inch long that ends here and then one out there. So you just kind of come up. You drew another one, and we just work our way around. So if you need, like I said, come out here, judge it. If you, you know, that's like the distance of my thumb. So if I need to use my thumb as a guideline to know how long they are, I at least know that they're consistent lengths. Okay. So look at, we put the first set around. Now here I'm coming over the stem right there. You may be, you may be like, oh no, what do I do? We just draw over the stem. Okay. It's not a big deal. Draw over the stem. We have erasers. You can erase that line. Okay, and you're going to work your way around. Remember, if you need to mark it, use your thumb. Okay, so I need to know it comes out to here. You can do that. You come up the edge of one. You do want to be careful when you get close to the last one here. This isn't really the last one, but... Okay, you want to make sure that they're at least touching. We're going to put another set of petals in between, okay? But go ahead and get that and done And you can first. come through, and you can just come off the tops of these. Look at and just loop them up a little bit. You see how I'm doing that? They're not flat across, they're looping up. I'm doing it around each one. I'm putting a back petal in. So these are fancy Gerber daisies. This is this goes from beginner to a little bit above beginner. If you were if you were a child doing this, I would say don't do See? Don't do the second layer around the outside. And you can always adjust. Like I think this one needs to come out a little bit more. We're doing pencils and we're doing them very light, so you can come and adjust. And then you can erase the extra lines. Does that make sense to everybody? I'm going to erase my stem that goes in my petal, and I'll make sure I cover that. I think I need to adjust this petal out a little bit. This is okay. This is why we use very light pencil lines. Not hard. I'm drawing a lot darker than I normally would. I'm doing it so that, the video, that it can be seen on the video. Normally, I would do this so light you guys couldn't see it. But those of you who have been in class with me before know that. I have to come around and show it to all of you. And then I'm going to, just for now, I'm going to put a real thin second edge down my stem line. I'm going to make it get a little thicker as it goes down to the bottom. Can you guys see that? So it gets a little thicker coming down towards, towards the bottom. Anywhere I need to erase, I'm going to erase. And then um, I'm going to put my leaves in. So leaves, I'm going to draw one 
and then I'll show you guys the second one if you need to see it, okay? So the leaves, you kind of come up, I'm gonna taper a little stem up, just a little tiny one here. You could just do one line, because you, if you don't wanna draw them both, you can give yourself a line, because when we put it in, you're gonna see the green. And then I'm gonna do a leaf, so a leaf can be shaped like this, it's almost like a teardrop, okay? It's almost like a teardrop, but it comes to a little bit more of a point here, and then you can bring your lines down and give yourselves a few little segments inside. And you could do one on both sides. The second one down here, I'm going to come down lower and put my second stem. And then in a second, I'll draw the second leaf, okay? Okay, so our next step is, is we want to pick the colors for our background here. Okay, like just, just like I said a few minutes ago, you want to have... Purple. If, if, yeah, what, purple? You want purple? <laughs> if your flower is going to be pink, you don't want a pink background. You want to have like a blue or a green or something that's... A contrasting color so that it stands out. I'm going to do blues, greens, and yellows. So I might start up here with blues and then put some greens and yellows down below. That way it kind of looks like one of those photographs where it's very blurred out in the background and there's just colors coming through. So it's going to look like there's a garden behind it with some blues and greens and yellows, some grasses with a blue sky. But it's going to be light and subtle. So what I'm going to do is you take your your um, little tubes of paint, you open them up and you're gonna put dots of them into your trays. So your trays have little holes and big holes. Let me hold it up. You're gonna put dots of them into your trays about like that and come across here. These holes right here are for the paint. The bigger ones are for mixing. That way you keep the solid paint out of the mixing holes. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna do some blue and I'm gonna do some yellows. These colors can be your choice. This is making art personal. This is fun. I'm going to put some green in here too, although I won't use lots of it. So the water is water. To the one thing we do keep when we trimmed our paper, we kept this bookmark right here, guys. Okay. I call it a bookmark. It's so that we can test the color of our um, watercolors because when we dilute them, it's hard to see what they, what colors they truly are. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna do a wash water. water background. So I'm gonna utilize two different size brushes. I'm going to utilize a medium sized brush that's about this big. And I'm going to utilize a little bit bigger round brush, which is about this big, okay? So we're gonna utilize those. The little one's gonna be to get around the details with water. And then the bigger one's gonna be to get the background with water. So what you need to do, we need to get quite a bit of water in here. So I start with my medium brush, my little one, the smaller one of the two. And I'm going to outline right around the petals. Now you want to be careful. You don't want to get it in the petal because the, the water will leak the paint in there. So the thing about water is if you don't put it there, it won't go there. Okay? So I'm not going too slow. I want you to realize that I'm not going too slow. You can actually work this in sections, which I recommend. We're gonna work this section up here. We're gonna outline around our, you can even probably go over your stems to be honest with you. We can put the stems right over. So I'm gonna, right over top of our background. I'm gonna outline around the petals here and I'm gonna do this little corner up in here first. So I have water in there. Water seeks its own level. So if you don't get any water in the petals, you won't get any paint in the petals. And then I'm gonna take my big brush with water and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna fill this all in. The nice thing about using water first is if you've never done watercolors or ink, sometimes we do inks, I'll tell you this, if it is wet, it's not going to get that dry brush look. You're not going to get lines. Okay, I'm going to bring a little water down past this petal, although I'm going to stop at that petal. That water coming down past it is my assurance that I don't get too much water on here and I don't get a line. Nobody wants a line in their background, okay? So I got it nice and wet here. And if you, you need to, you can always look at it from the side too. You can look at it from the side because you want to make sure water's everywhere. The biggest thing people struggle with when painting is it's dry. And then you go to put paint on there and it's too dry and it, it looks yucky and, and it creates a line. So we don't want that. We want it. So you're going to take wet. water. I'm going to take my big brush and I'm going to go one, and I'll, one of the big holes, two, three, four, five dabs of water. I just tap them off and I put that big brush right back in the water. That's pretty much what we're using it for right now. And I'm going to take my first color 
If you're gonna use two colors, you're gonna to wanna to mix up two holes of color. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'll do two holes. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna mix up some blue. So I'm gonna take some blue and I'm gonna mix it in one pile. Okay, we're looking for a light wash. And then maybe, I'll rinse that off. I might take a little bit of like my yellow ochre into the, another pile. Those are the two colors I'm gonna use because I'm gonna transition into greens. So I think those two will look really pretty. Now I'm real wet in there. So watch, if I come in with my brush and it's very wet, look at, I'm gonna start putting some of this color in. I have so much water in there, it's just bleeding out. Can you see that? It's because the paper's wet. If you go to mix your colors and your paint has dried, your paper has dried before you add color in there, add some more water. I'm take, I just grabbed a little bit of water on my brush and I'm coming in and I'm fading these colors out. Can you guys see how I did that? I'll show you with the blue, you'll be able to see it better. I'm gonna come up on top with some blues. Which brush are you? I'm using the smaller of the two that we just had, the medium, it's called the medium brush. So look at, I'm gonna bring some blues in here. Alright, I'm not going to bring it right up against the edge of where my water is at. I'm going to bring it over here into the bolder section. And I'll paint it in next to the flowers. I'll be right up in there. Look how I'm using the side of the brush. Can you guys see how I'm using the side of the brush? This is where you want to come in. You can rinse your brush. You can come in. Oops. I just threw mine. You can shake it off a little bit. And you can come in with just some clean water. And you can make these edges blur together and disappear. We don't want a harsh edge of yellow and a harsh edge of blue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. can always add more blue to darken it. And then same thing here, when you're coming off the edge, don't bring it all the way out. Like I have water out here, but I'm not bringing it out there. I only put that water there in case I needed to pull it out there. It was already wet. Now maybe I'll come back in with a little more yellow up in here. Look at it. The water will not go in where I don't have water. I got a little bit of my petal there, a little traveling. So look at this might make a little green where I'm mixing these. That's okay. I don't mind that. I'm blending them together. I'm going to wash my brush off. You don't want harsh edges. You want the colors to blend together. I'm going to come down in here with a little bit more yellow. I really like the yellow being in here. So when I bring water down here, I might, I might make, I want to make sure against this edge that there's yellow. I want to make sure against this edge that there's yellow. But for now, I'm just working in this section. And I can add more colors as I want. The water makes it bleed, which is beautiful. It's beautiful. If I want to go darker blue, I'll come in with a little bit of the more blue. I put a little more blue paint in. Because I got a nice light wash going here. I don't have it real dark. You can always check your color by putting it on your bookmark. What I mean by that is after you diluted your colors you can come in like this and you can see the actual color of what you're working with. Can you guys see that? I know how dark my ink, my watercolors are by doing it on this test strip and that's why we have those. All right. That's why we never ever throw away anything when it comes to that. We have more paper towels if anyone needs them. If you need to come in, so say you get too much somewhere, you can come in with a paper towel. We, we, we can, you can dab it, you can blot it up. So if I wanted to create some light spots right in here, look at I could blot and I could lighten up that blue a little bit in there to make it blend a bit more, which is a really nice technique to do. And then what I'll do is I'll come around my next section. I don't need to use the little brush for this section because I don't have any detailed areas. I'm going to come in with my big brush. I'm going to fill this section in with water. My caution, I caution you, caution you, caution you, do not work in too big of a section, okay? I can't stress that enough. If you work in too big of a section, your paint is going to dry, all right? I'm gonna bring, come in with some greens this time, so I'm gonna lighten up some green. I might mix a little bit of my, I'm gonna start with my green. Ooh, I like that, just like a sap green is what I'm using. I have a cobalt blue, a sap green, and yellow ochre is what I'm, the colors that I have on here. Kind of green? Sap green, that's what color I have. If you don't have it, nope, it's a hooker's green, that's what it's called. But if you guys don't have any, I have some, okay? But any green you want, you can always add a little brown into a brighter green, and you can get a more neutral green. You can add a little yellow into it, okay? So look, I'm going to come in here with some greens down here. 
and I'm washing. I like to use the side of my brush when doing the wash. I'm going to rinse it off. I'm going to come in with some more yellow ochre. Look, I didn't come all the way down. And I might pull some of this green over this line too, because that way it blends. All right. You see how my colors are muting together? Even though I'm using yellow, I'm pulling that yellow down into the green. When I do my leaves, I'll make sure I don't do a greeny, I'll do more of a brownish green probably. So they stand out, okay? And this is light. We're gonna get, we'll go real dark with our green. So don't make your back, you don't have to make your background super, super dark. And then if I need to lift anywhere, that's what I call it, I come in and you can dab with your cloth and you can lift up. Mine runs on, you're not supposed to really do watercolors up on a board, but this way we can show it to you. And then I'm gonna continue with my big brush. So now I might come over here and I'm going to work up. So I'm gonna come in, I'm using my big brush to come around my petals to make it faster. You guys do what you're comfortable doing, all right? Don't don't go, it's not go big or go home. It doesn't, you don't have to do more than you're capable of doing. Do what is comfortable for you because it's not a rush. The biggest rush is making sure your water stays wet and don't work right up against the, the wet and dry edge. That way, if you, you don't get the dry brush look. If you're getting a dry brush look, you don't have enough water on your paper. Does everybody understand what a dry brush look meet looks like, guys? Yeah? So a dry brush looks is when you if you, if it doesn't so when you have dry brush, what it looks like it's very um you can see your brush lines. You can see light and dark lines, so I don't know how to show you on here without actually doing it. You, a, a wash should look like there's water there and it should look like the, the colors just spread out and blend together seamlessly. If you're getting really harsh edges in your background, you don't have, you're getting a dry brush looking, you don't have enough water. Does that explain it better? Yeah. Okay. So look, at, I brought water up to here, so I'm gonna stop down here. I'm gonna leave that water barrier, but I'm gonna come in with some greens. I'm gonna start with my greens down here at the bottom. I might come grab a little water. Well, I'm using my big brush now because, you know, it's a bigger area. I'm gonna kind of fade my greens out a little bit because I want them to go lighter. I don't want them to be so dark. They don't have to be so dark. I'll bring a little bit of it up in here. Okay, I'm gonna bring my brush in. I'm gonna rinse it off. I'm gonna fade my greens out. You see how I'm doing this? With clean water. So I rinse the paint off and then I bring in the clean water in. Then I'm going to rinse it off again. I'm going to grab some yellows and I'm going to come up to about here. Whoops, I'm running. I'm running away. So look at, I'm going to bring some of those down into the greens because we did that over here. So this is how we're going to make a match. Look at, I'm going to bring them right in. Okay, I'll bring them down. I'll pull some of the greens up. It's very wet. You can kind of mold these colors. I'm not overworking it. Now that line is an issue. We have water there for a second. We're okay, but we need to bring some clean water in here. And make that line disappear because we want that we don't want a harsh yellow line there that's the biggest mistake people make with watercolors is they create a harsh line so everyone that's here does that do you understand how not to get a harsh line okay i'm looking at this now and you know what i think i want a little green up in here or a little more blue so i'm going to re-wet this and i might grab just a tiny bit of blue i'm going to work some over my yellow because it's starting to dry now but I'm going to make it disappear. I might grab a tad bit of the green here off to the side and just tap it in a little bit. Just because it was so yellow there, it didn't look like it matched. Now, it looks like it matches a little bit better. That's just my look at I'm tapping. And the same thing, guys. You can come in and lift anywhere you want. You can come in and add more, too. I suggest getting a layer on, drying it if you need to, and then coming in. Because what happens is people will overwork. If it's wet and you just keep working over it and working over it and working over it, look, I'm going to add water in next. All you're going to do is tear your paper up. Your paper will eventually start rolling up. But if you come in, put a layer on, let it dry, blow dry or air dry, depends on the look that you want. Um, I'm putting lots of water in here. If you let it dry, then you can come in 
and put multiple layers over it, it's going to look so much better than if you just keep working it, working it, working it, working it. The last thing you want to do is keep working. Look, I'm pulling some water over into here already where we worked before. That way, if I need to, it's wet. All right. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to grab some yellows first. I'm going to bring some yellows in here. I'm just going to transition my yellows. Come in across. Pull them down into my greens. Make them disappear a little bit if you need to. Mix my brush off. And then I'm going to come in with some blues. Look at I'm going to start up in here. Now when I come around in here, you can always use your small brush. I'm doing this so you can see better. And I have brush control. I am used to using the brushes. When Sometimes I ultimately choose to use a bigger brush because it's faster, but not when there's details involved and not if I'm having trouble controlling that area. You have to be able to determine that. That's part of being an artist is, is using what is easiest for you. There's no set rule. I got a little paint in there. There's no set rule for how to do it. Just because my way works for me doesn't mean that a different way isn't going to work for you. So look, I'm bringing some of this down. I'm going to lift a little color here. I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to look at it for a second and I'm going to see if I think I need some more colors or if I think I need to blow dry first. I think I can come in with a clean brush and add a little more yellows in here and then I think I need to pause and blow dry it because we're going to start getting muted colors that I don't want. Okay, so that's my next step is I'm going to take it off of the board. I'm going to lift a little bit here. I'm going to get the blow dryer and I'm going to blow dry it. And then if I need to come add any more colors, then I will. But I'll be able to tell then. The biggest thing is, is that you want, you don't, like I said, you don't want to overwork it. I want my background to be lighter than my flower. So I'm not going to go too dark. I like this soft look. All right? You can do it however you want. But that's, that's step one. So like I just said, we're going to, um, we're going to do our stems and our leaves next. We're going to do those first before we do the flower petals. So we're going to put those in. We're going to use a, I have a green and I'm going to put a little bit of brown into it just to tone it down. Not a lot, but I want it to be a different color green than I have back here. So putting brown into green will give it a more earthy look. If your green's too bright, sometimes putting a little yellow back in will lighten it up. So you can do some different colors with the greens. Okay. So I'm going to add a little brown to my tray and I have my green. Now I already mixed the green before. You're gonna, we're going to use our little tiny brushes too, the smallest brush in the set that you have, all right? This one. So I already mixed my green from before, and that's the color green I'm using. If you're having a different color green, you want to pick a different one. I'm going to add more green to it, though. What's the hooker green? The hooker green is the one that I used. That just happened to be what was in my set. Some of you have viridian hue. That's fine. You can use that. You want to definitely add some brown to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some brown to my green whatever shade green you have add a little brown because we're looking for a dark green can you see that it was brighter i added a little bit of brown at a time and i got a dark green we want it to be dark like that because we want it to um be darker than what is currently there and then we're going to use our smaller brush it's just a little brush this gets details i always one thing that I always do, I always dip my brush if it's dry in the water first, and then I tap it off on my on my tray before you start painting. If you have so if you haven't done watercolors before, watch the instruction first before you start painting because you can get it really dark really quick and it won't look good. So I have quite a bit of water here in my paint. I did darken my paint up. I it's quite dark. So let me show you the darkness level on my sample sheet. So I have. You can see how dark that is. I might actually go in and add a little more green and a little more brown into my mixture. Darken them up because I really want this to be quite dark. See, see, how, see the darkness level there? Uh -huh. You guys see? Uh -huh. That's what the strip's for. This is really nice. So we got to wet it first. Well, yeah, I'm going to come in. I When you first start painting with watercolor, it is always a smart idea to come in with water into your section and just wet it real quick that way you if you make a mistake you have you have a few seconds to fix it okay this is a precautionary thing i come right up over the lines 
We're going to paint right up over the edge of my lines. And I, I'm being careful with my water. I'm being precise where I put it. If you're not, your water, your, your colors are going to go where your water's at. So I painted with water and then I'm going to come in with my green. This is my green that has brown in it. I darkened it up to make like a hunter green. We're mixing it. Look, I'm going to come in. I'm going to paint it right down. I'm pulling it right down into the water. Okay, look at I didn't add any more green. Look what happens when you fade it out. It gets lighter and lighter and lighter. I'm going to grab a little bit more because I want to have it be darker, especially down one edge. Darker down the right side. That's what I'm going to do on this. But I will pull it over because I don't want to see my pencil lines. And I'll grab a little bit more. And I'm just going to darken it. We're bringing it right up to the edge of the petal. I'm coming right over my line. And I keep layering it because I want to have darks and lights in there. I might let that, I might come down the right hand edge a little bit more. With a little bit more dark. Now look at I know it's all wet in there. So look at if I come down with quite a bit of dark paint down my right hand side here. Look what happens. It bleeds out. It's going to bleed over this way. And it's going to leave a natural light edge along the inside edge. And I'm going to let it do that. I'm not going to keep blending it until um, it's all one color. I don't want that. I want to have that variation. I can always come in too and create even more of a distinct line. I can come in along the one edge and I can lift a little bit of color. You just want to be careful you're not bringing it out into your background. So I can lift a little color down here if I, if I blend it too much. And I can create that illusion that it's lighter on one side and darker on the other with my paper towel. And then I'm going to come in with my dark. Now on these little tiny stems coming out here, I'm not going to worry about putting water in. I'm going to come and I'm just going to brush them. They're so little, you don't gotta worry about that. And then I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Same thing out here. I had a little bit more brown in that one. That's okay. I'm not worried about it. I had a little clump of brown and so I'm just going to make it work. I'm going to pull it down in and fade it in out here. Actually, I like that little bit of brown. Brown's always a great way to darken greens. Okay. So far so good, guys? Mm All right, now we're going to start our leaves. We're going to use the same little brush that I lost over here. Just. So I'm going to come in. The best way to do the leaves is come in with some water first and paint it, for you guys at least, when you're learning. Paint the water in. One leaf at a time. Don't try to do them both. I'm going to come in with my greens, and I'm going to kind of just come in and put my wash coat of green in. So look, I'm going to come in. I'm going to blend it in. And I fade it in. So I'll have some different shades of green going on here. Now, what I can do is if I want to make an edge darker, look at I can come right down my little stem here, and then I can on this bottom edge I can make this darker. Okay. Maybe put a little darker up in here. Okay. I might even lift a little bit of that. That's fine. I'm going to do some details in there, but we're going to put our base coat in first and then we're going to let it dry and then we'll come in and do another coat. So after it dries, so I'm going to come in with some water first. I might have a little bit of paint on here. I didn't rinse it out real well, but this is my water coat. It actually helps see it better. So I'm going to outline. I'm going to go right over my pencil line so I cover them with my water and then I'll come in with my green with my initial coat and look at I'm going right over the pencil lines that way I don't have to erase them. Erasing is not always easy with watercolors. Extend it up a bit. I'm just going to kind of wash it all in here together. 
So that looks very flat and monotone in there, all right? So then what I might do is I'll come in with some dark green, a little extra, and maybe I'll come right down this middle line here, and I'm gonna darken the lower edge. And I'm gonna let this dry. I could leave it like that if I wanted to, to have a more subtle look. Um, I'd have to erase my pencil lines that I have on the inside. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually blow dry this before we go on any further and come in and do a little more detail. Okay, guys? All right, so I just blow dried this. Now what I wanna do is I had some veins on my leaves. You don't need those. Remember, you do wanna have some shading, light to dark, but you don't need the veins. But I want them. I like them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I blow dried it. So now I kind of dried what was in the background. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm not gonna add so much water, but I'm gonna come in like this. I'm gonna start without the water. I'm gonna bring in a, a line here and I'll pull a couple little veins coming out. And you can always just put some paint lines and leave it at that, or you can get a little water on your brush and fade them out just a little bit. You don't wanna go over blending. You're just, you'll blend it on one color, but you can kind of pull some of this out a little bit. You can come in and do, you could bring a little bright yellow in here at the top. Look at, if I add a little yellow in at the top where it's lighter, I had that mix from before. Look at, I add, I, I add an instant light area into all the lighter spots that I didn't have as dark. So I can come in and do that also. That really brightens it. So I can come in with my yellow, even in my stem, any area that was lighter is going to I'm coming a little more concentrated. It's going to take on that bright yellow. It's going to look amazing. It's going to be subtle, but when it's all done, it's going to look super duper cool. So look, I'm going to come over here. I'm not look. I'm not adding water first. I'm going to come in and go over my little lines real quickly, where I put my veins. And I don't want to. I don't want to leave just a harsh line. So I grab a little water. I tap my brush off, and I just come in, lightly soften them. And then I come in with my yellow ochre and I'm just kind of filling in the areas that are lighter because then all of a sudden I'm bringing some depth into my watercolor by adding yellow over the green. It makes it look so much more natural looking. Not a necessary step, not by any means, but it is a nice step to do. Does everybody have any questions on that? No one? then we'll blow dry again. Okay, so the next colors I'm gonna do are the colors for the petals. So I wanted to pick two different colors that were different than what I have in the background. So I chose a, a different shade of blue than what I used back here, it's a brighter blue. And I picked some violet, so I'm gonna mix those two colors together to get my, to get my um, darker shades, because I wanna have a light shade and a dark shade for the petals. The first petals we're gonna work on are these background petals, the ones that are half petals. And there's a reason for that. If you can see right down here in that little V, that means that that petal is behind these two petals. So it's gonna, those two petals right here are gonna create a shadow back here. So these are gonna be a little bit darker. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in. I'll, come in, I'll do one at a time. I'm gonna come in with my water first, just in the background petal right over my lines, okay? And you can mix up, you can mix up some of your colors. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water and I'm gonna come in with my glues. Now I'm gonna do this a little darker than I would do for a wash because I want this petal to be darker, but I still need to have water in there. We don't wanna go in straight color, not, you know, not, and there's not a step like this. So I'm gonna do a wash, but it's gonna be a darker color. Where did I paint water in? Right in here. So look at, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna come along the top of my petal, I'm gonna come down in, and I'm gonna pull it down in, okay? Now, I'm gonna take some of my purple that's in a wash, and I'll use my purple for my shading. So if you were doing orange, maybe you would do like yellow at the top and you'd come in with the orange color down below, okay? Now right here you'll see that I have a line if you guys can see, I have a line right here. I wash my brush off and I'm just gonna lightly come into my blues 
And you almost can tap, 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 tap the blues and purples together to make that fade away. Okay? And if you want to come in, you can darken down in here a bit more. You're more than welcome to. Just be cautious when you get up to where you want it to stop, or to be lighter, wash your brush off. And then just tap, tap, tap the colors. If I went all the way up, that petal wouldn't be blue. I'm only using the purple to create a shadow. I don't want a purple flower. Make sense, guys? Okay, if you want to darken some of that blue up, you want it real bright, you can come in after the fact and do that, okay? And you're going to work your way around. Let me do one more, but you're going to continue your way around the whole set of flowers. Does anyone have any questions? So look, I put water in the whole thing. I'm going to come in with my diluted blue. I'm going to paint this in. So if you were doing pinks, you'd come in with your pinks with water. You dilute it down. Always dilute it down. You can take some red. Some of your you red. First or do you, wet you always wet it first. Okay. You you can put your red in for you know in some water. You dilute it. You have you wet your paper and then you can come in and paint it. Now you want to check out your shades of colors. You want to make sure you like them. So red, a light red will look pink on your paper. It's not going to be like a magenta pink, but it's going to be a pink. If you want oranges, you're going to use like yellows and reds and you're going to combine them. You could use some, you could do some burnt sienna in there too. So then I come in with my purples in here and I'm just darkening it up and I'm tapping. What I'm doing is I'm coming in down into here and I'm just tapping the dark color in because it's wet, it's fading out and I'm washing my brush whenever I need to if I need to tap it a little bit more and clean it out. And then my final step would be, I want to brighten this edge up out here a little bit because I want a nice bright blue flower. So I'm coming in with a little darker blue, working it in and then tapping it into that purple. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we're just going to do that every other one. So every one that's in between, we're going to work our way right around. Okay. Anybody have any questions? So, okay, look at I got I got my water in. Let me get mine in. I'm going to put my diluted blue in. Pull it down all the way to the center. Blend it around. You want to come up here, Kathy, and look? Okay, because anybody want to see the tapping, come up close and look. Sometimes it's nice to just come up close and look. Okay? So I'm going to wash my brush. I got my blue in the background and I took some purple and mix. So I just brought some purple up here in the corner that's mixed with my blue because I want that dark shade. Okay, so, so, yep. So then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to bring the purple up the edge here, up this edge, get in here. And then right in here, tap, tap, tap. Now I stop because I don't want to go too far with it. I wash my brush. I kind of shake it off, tap it off. And then I come into the blue and I tap back and forth and it makes it disappear. Then I come back in with my brighter blue at the end. Does that make more sense? Isn't that pretty? Now, the um, watercolor sets, out. they all have different colors in them. So a color I'm using might not be an exact color that you're going to use at home. That's okay. That's okay. Use what you have. You can always blend colors. You can always go to the store and buy different colors too. This all sets, we always give out different set colors, so some people have different colors than other people. So um, if you are here at the studio, then the, the colors that I have are available, but we do give sets for the classes, for the watercolor workshops, so people have their own. And they're, I mean, they might be a little bit more limited, but they're always open to use the ones that are here too. And you can always use the pans. The pans are like what the kids have, the little pans that have the hard clay. They look like little clay discs in there. They're actually watercolor discs. You can use them too. You just you have to activate each one with a little bit of water in them, and then you, you you rub the water around in the pan, and then you put it on, and you can keep going and getting more. The more water you have, the lighter it is. But you still do the process the same. You still come in and you come in and wet your area first. Some people like one better than the other. It doesn't mean either one's right. It's just a preference. It's like when I paint with acrylics, I like to paint with heavy body acrylics. 
when I do my own personal work, but in the studio we use more of a, flow, a flowing acrylic, a softer body acrylic, because it's easier for students to learn on, because they're they're learning how to make the paint flow, not how to dilute the paint on top of it. I mean, they learn it a little bit, because we're not using a fluid acrylic, but they, we use a little softer body so that it's easier for the students. When I work at home, I don't like to do that. I like the ability to have the heavy body and, and I like how it works. I do both. I have a painting at home that I'm working on that I don't want the heavy bodies for because I want to, I'm thinning it down so much and I'm doing a lot of glazing and stuff. That's not, heavy body's not good for that. we're going to do these petals and I know some of you already did because some of you didn't have the background petals and that's fine so what you're going to do is you're going to watch me do a petal what we really need to concentrate on is we need a lighter edge and a darker edge where they're overlapping so right in here they're overlapping so we need to have one light one side lighter and one side darker we're going to go in and put highlights in afterwards this is the next step and then we have to do the highlights that don't take too long so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my brush and water first, same thing. Now, if you want to, if it's a bigger, it's a bigger area, you could always use your medium brush to fill in the water. It won't take as long. All about being easier, but just get your area. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do every other one, and then I'm going to go around the other ones. That gives it time to dry, so they're not bleeding together. Does that make sense? Why I would do that? I have to mix a little bit more paint up. I'm going to start with my blues. Now, I don't maybe need to go quite so dark out here. All right. Get a little bit of, I got to add a little water. So just watch me. I'm going to do every other one because otherwise they'll blend together. So I put the water in here. So look at, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do my lighter. I'm doing a little bit lighter than the background. Okay. And I'm going to do the wash around. I've added a little bit of water to my blue. So it was lighter. Doesn't mean I'm going to keep it all light, but I might keep that outside edge a bit later. So look at, I got the outside edge later. Then I might come in over on the side with a little bit of the purple or a little bit of the blue, but a little darker shade of it. So I add maybe a little bit more water to it. And I might come down here. So look at, I might have, bring some blues down the center and I might wash some blues out on one side. Okay. Always get some water if you need to make the blend. That's how you make the colors disappear. You see how I'm doing that? And I'm keeping it light on one side, darker on the other. Then maybe I'll come in on that side down here at the bottom, just at the bottom with a little bit darker purple or a darker of the color that you're using. So look, I might darken that up. I got it quite dark. I'm going to wash my brush off. I have a lot of dark color in there and I don't want it all to pull up. So I'm going to come in with some clean water and I'm going to lightly pull that up. Okay, you can pull a little bit of that up in there. It's that easy. Do you see how I left it lighter? Can you see how it's lighter here? Up in here, but it's darker on this side, but it's lighter on this side. There's a reason, because when I do this one, this edge is gonna be dark, and the dark's gonna come against the light. But while we're letting that one dry, we're gonna skip this one and come do the exact same pattern on this. Alright, so we're going to come down one. It's always going to be light against dark. So if you're ever wondering what side should be light and what side should be dark, I'm working here and I'm skipping one so that can be confusing. I look back up here and the first side I see is dark. So I know that the side against it right here would be what light. And then this side would be dark. So I, I'm going to mimic it. So if you're not sure, you just look at what's above it. This is dark. So anything that is on the opposite side, because that would be the bottom side, that would be down here, is going to be light. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. You, if, it, if it's too confusing, do one at a time, let them dry, and go, and then do light against dark. That way you don't get confused. But if you can keep it straight, just come in, do really light. 
Not a lot, you just pull it around, wash it out. You want it to be lighter, like this, very light. Get up along your pencil lines, okay? Then you could come in down along this edge because I want this edge to be laid up in here, okay? You can come down here with the dark blue. You can pull that up. Come in with some clean water and fade it out. We don't want it to, we don't want a harsh line there. And then I'll come in with a little purple or I could just do more dark blue. If I was doing pink, I could do darker pink. I put a little bit of purple here. Just a little. I wash my brush off with clean water and then I lightly just kind of dab at the edges of it here to pull it up. So now I have very light edge here and it's going to be a dark edge here. See how it's going to continue all the way around? I just don't want to do this edge because if you bring water in here that paint's going to suck into it. So we have to let the air dry for a few minutes. So I'm going to skip. I'm gonna do this one. Always fill it in with water. So, because this edge is dark, this edge is gonna be light and that edge is gonna be dark. So I'm gonna bring the whole thing in with the blue first. Always kinda of come up with a nice clean edge up there. Even though this petal's upside down, just look to your last petal and it tells you what to do. Does anybody here in class have a question on that? No one? That makes the explanations real simple? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So look at that edge is dark. This edge is going to be light. So this edge is going to be dark. So I'm going to bring a little blue in. Stop. Wash it all off my brush. Shake my brush off, tap it off, and then just come along the edge here. See how I'm bringing that brush right in? Come along the edge and just pull it out a little bit. That way it all stays light. And then I could come in with a little of the purple. And I'll do the same thing. I wash my brush and I'll pull a little bit of it in. So if you were doing oranges or yellows, you might come in with a little bit of the reds down here, the red or orange, and leave the yellow on the tops. That way you get a nice variation of color. If you notice, I'm going a lot lighter out here. I'm going to skip and do this one. Now, you'll, I don't have an even amount. Well, yeah, I, I have an even amount. If you don't have an even amount, just stop. If you're getting up to where you're going to be next to another one, you don't have to stop. Just blow dry first. If you gotta work against one you already did and it's not dry, blow dry it if it hasn't had time to dry. It's not that you have to stop, it's not that you can't continue, you just have to blow dry. So look at I'm gonna come in with my light blue first. And I'm pulling and I pull in the direction of the petal. This was something I didn't mention. You don't want to just come in and start scribbling in here with your paint. I'm not even look at you see, I'm not even filling it in a full the full color. Now, because this side is dark. This side right here is going to be light, so that side is going to be dark. So it's going to, this is where somebody could make a mistake. You get dark, light, dark. So up on the top edge up there is where I'm going to bring my dark. And when I come all the way around, it'll make sense. Okay, I just, and to get to dark, I'm just using a little thicker paint. I stop, I wash my brush, and then I just come along the edges of the dark and pull it out. Any questions so far, anybody? No? You guys are the quietest group I've ever had in here. Then I'll come in with a little purple. And the only reason I'm using purple is because I started with purple. If you can see, it looks real pretty without it. When you, If I didn't put the purple in to begin with, I could do this with just one color. Just the pretty blue color that I had. Or just the pink. Okay. And then, what I'm going to do, this one's dry now, so I can come to this one. And then work my way around. And by the time I do that, they should be dry. I'm going to pause and blow dry mine just to play it safe. Because why put all this work in and not blow dry? Now that I blow dried, I'm going to just continue around. I'm going to fill in here. And this is where you're going to see the magic happen. I like to fill in with the bigger brush, the medium brush, just because it's easier, to be honest. A little easier. I'll come in with my light blues. Same thing I did on the other petals. We're not doing anything different. But now I have a guideline. It's a little easier to see the lights against the darks this way. That's for certain.
and I'll come in. I'll do my dark blues down here. Now I have that dark right against that light edge. Now look it. I don't want to go too dark. I'm going to wash my brush. I'm going to rinse off the water, tap it off, and then I'll come in with clean water, and that's what pulls that out. See the difference? The water is what pulls it out. Okay? That's the important th thing to know. The water pulls it out. You can always lift. If you get it too dark, go in with your paper towel and lift a little bit. Okay? Then I'll grab a little purple because I just want it to match. I'm going to come with a little purple there. Not much. Wash my brush. Get the water off and then pull some of that up and fade it out. Watercolors aren't always about everything being completely filled in. So let me show you. I purposely left this a little too dark. I'm going to come in and lift. Okay? Just like that. touch up some spots if I want to like right in here I might want to do it a little darker I can definitely go ahead and do that but I'm gonna blow dry this quick if I need any touch-ups anywhere I'm gonna add them I love watercolors I love them. I'm do the same thing with inks so now what we're gonna do is we're going to do two things we're gonna do our insides and we're gonna do a little bit of um, highlighting on here. Let me show you, actually, let me show you the highlighting real quick. Candy, can I have a little of your white? Yeah, you fine. Yeah. Just so I, we can do it, okay. so you can steal some of mine if you want. Oh, okay. We're gonna take some white. We're not gonna delete the white, okay? I like the white when we don't dilute it, because what you do is you, you don't need a lot. Just take some on your brush, don't dilute it. And you can come in and watch. You can add in some extremely cool with the side of your brush. Orange came out. Some like white highlights. Um, if, if you that's the oil in it. Um, you want you want to mix it up. Yep. Yep. So look at you can. Yep. Squeeze it. Look at you can come in and you can with the side of your brush you can brush some subtle highlights in. You can even do them in the back ones back here. You can blend them around. Mm -hmm. You can bring some white highlights in. They're subtle. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. And you kind of brush them in, blend them around. And look at when you stand back, it creates a really pretty look. You don't overdo it. I put it on a little thicker. It's thicker on my brush. I try to keep a consistent side here. So oh, I didn't keep it consistent there. I come down the light side. And look at I'm just blazing some in there. It just gives it a little bing. It looks like the sun's glistening off of it. You do not need to do this step. This is an extra added thing. You can just do it on the really highlighted parts if you really want to add a little white speck like this. Or you can come around and do some along the edges. That's up to you. I'm using the side of the brush. And then if you get a little too much in an area, like out here in the dark, bring your bring some water in it. It won't hurt nothing. I just pushed my thing back. You know, if you get a little too much back in here, bring a little water in it. Soften it up. You're using the real tiny brush, right? Tiny brush, yes. So you can do that wherever you want in as much as you want. Like I said, if you get a little too much, just bring some water in it before it dries, of course. This paint will dry really quick like when it's dry like this because it's watercolor. So the thick paint will not take that long to dry. So if you want to do that step, you got to do it quite quickly. And then I'm going to do a center. I'm going to use some browns. In my center, maybe some yellow ochres because I have ochre, I have that in there. I'm going to mix them together. No, I'm just going to mix. I'm not even going to come in with, I'm going to do this a little thicker. I'm not even going to come in with water. I'm going to use the side of my brush. I mix the brown and the yellow ochre together. Quite thick consistency. I'm going to make it a little darker. Add a little more brown into it. I'm going to paint it in. I'm covering up my edges. We want it a little thicker. 
And I'm actually doing a little dry brush look over that. That's not quite completely dry brush. A little bit. And then I might come in with the same thing I just did with the white, but I might come in with some thicker yellow and look at I might tap. Tap some thicker yellow around and it gives us some instant texture and a really cool dark center. So that's one way to do your center. You can wash it around, you can lift, you can do whites. You can come in with a little bit of white and you could do little, little tiny little dots, very little dots all the way around it. Very little, it'll look like seeds. You can't smush, you almost got a very tap. You can put it on the wooden tip too. Like that's really pretty, okay? You can even come in around with the whites. You could highlight some of the tips of your really skinny lines. Look at, you can highlight some of your leaves and your stuff a little bit if you want to. And you don't have to use just white, you can use any color, you just use it a little thicker. I'm a big fan of learning the medium and then pushing it past what people normally do with it. People don't normally do this, but that doesn't mean you can't. It's very similar to using a gauche. So, um, which is a, like a thicker watercolor. So it's very similar to that. And that is it. You can come, take a little water on your brush, stand out with some paint, come down in the corner, come up a little bit. So when you frame it, you don't cut it off and you can sign your name. Look at, I keep just, I just keep getting more with a little brush or, or use a Sharpie marker, like one of those thin Sharpies. And there you go. That painting's from a photograph sample, a royalty free photo at that. So it's um, a royalty free photo and we painted it and everybody's got their own unique painting and which is the beautiful. finished product the, the funnest part is coming in and taking the tape off around the outside edges you use a blow dryer to activate the heat around the tape so that they, it doesn't tear the paper and you go slow and you'll have a beautiful white border around the outside of it i love it let's see candy here's just looking amazing what's your favorite part about this painting huh? I like the petals. I like the interplay of light and dark. On the I love the interplay of light and dark. You really get to learn that a lot here. I love it.